What is up folks today's video is going to be by Project Shivoham an untold discovery of ancient india that's gravity i've got my card ready over here my fancy card and let's watch the video Christopher Columbus discovered America. Well, this is what we learn at school. But is it really the fact? It is a fact, but it is a subjective fact. What it means is from a medieval European standpoint, it is a fact that he discovered a sea route to America. But even okay. before he stepped into America, there were people living over there. So it's technically yeah. he did not discover America. He probably So if you define discovery as when it came into the mainstream uh, knowledge of all the people when it came to mainstream acceptance yeah you could argue that Christopher Columbus discovered Americas but there were people who went to the Americas before that but their discovery never really translated to knowledge that was commonplace after that that's probably what they mean by discovery of course you don't want to qualify what you mean by discovering america by using so many words so you just say christopher columbus discovered america he discovered a sea route to america or may not that either because life erikson a norse explorer from iceland apparently was the first european to set foot on the north american continent so okay. columbus discovering america is a very subjective fact which is right from a medieval european standpoint Here is another yeah, example. Yeah, I'm not sure if you should call that subjective because like I said, knowledge being spread is what makes a discovery a discovery. Like if I saw a ghost, I just discovered ghosts. Ghosts do exist. But if I didn't share that knowledge with anyone, can I be credited with that discovery? Vasco da Gama discovered sea route to India. History says that he is the one who discovered sea route from Europe to India. Well, it's not completely true. and here is why it is so back in the 12th century there was immense competition amongst the european kingdoms to trade with the far east countries like india and china so explorers like vasco da gama and christopher columbus they set out on expeditions back then to find out a sea route to the far eastern countries which are india and china vasco da gama in his first voyage to india he documented it in a journal and here is what he wrote about it This is the map from Vasco da Gama's own journal the first voyage to India and this is how he traveled all the way from Lisbon over Africa from Malindi eventually to Calicut in India those were the days when okay. sea route is already established between Africa and India and there was a lot of trade going on between these two continents in his journal Vasco da Gama clearly writes that with the help of a pilot given by an African king they were able to reach to India well that's a hard fact so technically Vasco da Gama did not discover sea route to India on his own but from a medieval european standpoint yes he is the one who has actually came from europe to india by sea so again it is a subjective fact that vasco da gama discovered sea route to india again repeating what i said i don't think we should call it subjective to the perspective of europe i think we should look at it as when did that general knowledge of the discovery get accepted by mainstream knowledge when did that become available to literally everyone says Newton discovering gravity is also a very subjective fact and in this video we'll explain you why is it so well the now we should mark false and as we right here because there's a difference between saying that uh, the discovery of the continents is the same as discovery of gravity see continents physically exist gravity is a concept it's an idea of why things fall down why things fall towards the earth now discovering continents means you physically go there and you see it you can say that it was not columbus who discovered america it was this person because there is a record that states so such and so and so you can't really say the same for gravity the reason being because it's a concept it depends on how you describe that concept what tools you use uh, to do the same do you give it a mathematical framework do you make this knowledge available in a published form that can be easily accessed by literally anyone these things are also required for something conceptual like gravity but they not required for the discovery of continents you just have to go there and see it and document it i hope i'm clear there are many people who discovered gravity and worked on it much before newton and here is our record about it maharishi kanada an ancient indian physicist and philosopher who is conservatively placed at around 600 BC but he could possibly be much older than that maharishi 
I think he is a philosopher not a physicist for example he is the same person who came up with the idea of atom that was a philosophical idea where he said uh, hey imagine things in the universe they can be broken down further and further till you reach a point where you cannot break it down even further and that is the anu that's a philosophical idea he said he didn't come to that conclusion after doing physical experiments where he broke something down to a point where you reach an atom that's physically impossible to do by a person with the tools you might have available you need very advanced apparatus to do that which extremely reasonable to believe that back in 600 BC or whenever this person existed it those kinds of apparatus didn't exist she kanada has written a treatise on different elements about the nature and the cosmos and the forces present in it the name of the book is vaisheshika darshanam in this book he explained about different elements of nature the forces present in it how they react to different circumstances how do the five elements of nature behave in different situations and a lot more this book is the prime source for our topic today which is gravity in this treatise of vaisheshika darshanam he gave prithivya uh, tejo vayu ragasham kalo you know what this kind of looks like modern sanskrit to me to be honest i'm not a sanskrit scholar i've learned sanskrit in school so i can recognize sanskrit i can understand the meanings and the way the words are made and all these things now this looks like a more familiar form of sanskrit to me compared to i've seen ancient sanskrit which doesn't look like this it doesn't take this form now all this i can only confirm by talking to an expert sanskrit scholar uh, but very often what has happened is that there are claims like these like the vaimanika shastra or vedic mathematics which are modern inventions which are described in modern sanskrit and their claims were that they were of ancient origin which is completely untrue so there were some for lack of a better term i will say scammers who uh, wrote these down and claimed that they wrote originated from many thousand years ago my suspicion is that this text is also one such i can only confirm this by consulting a sanskrit scholar but yeah that's what i think a lot of principles about the fundamentals of the nature and here is one such rudhi vyapas tejo vayu rakasham kalo digatma manaiti dravyani dravyani that's a na Okay, maybe printing. It's printed in a font of way or whatever. Here is what it means: Prudvi, Earth, Apas, Water, Tejas, Fire, Vayu, Air, Kala, Time, Dik, Space, Atma, Self, Manas, Mind. What Maharishi Kanad says is this entire nature is made up of these eight elements. The first six are pretty easy to understand: earth, water, fire, air, time, and space. Self and mind are not just limited to only a human beings, but here the fact is every living thing has a sense of self and also a sense of cognition as well. So, okay, and let's talk about this. You don't get to randomly say something and expect people to take you at your word. Knowledge doesn't come to a person. magically you don't randomly get all this information and write it down and then you know in future claim that you discovered it all discoveries have to come as a consequence of evidence where is the evidence that led to the statement how can you conclude that these are what the universe is made of whatever it is he stated here regarding what newton said he made a theory he made a law that this gravitational force is what results in these observations and then we made further observations to confirm what he's saying is right that's not how this worked so that's what he means explaining about how objects move in this nature made up of these eight elements further down he gives another principle which reads as follows uchchepanam avakshepanam akunchanam prasaranam gamanam iti karmani which means upward movement downward movement contraction expansion and horizontal movement these are the five possible karmani karmani here has a very contextual meaning he classifies different motions into these five categories and he explains each of these motions in detail as well for now let's pick up the first one uchchepanam the upward movement remember the word uchchepanam maharishi kanad writes as follows gurutva prayatna samyoga ram uchchepanam let's break it down gurutva gravitational force prayatna 
Yeah, I think we get where this is going. He's going to make many kills. There are three fours. But how these things work. But you're not showing evidence for these discoveries. You're just saying it's all there in this book. We don't even know what this book is written in those times, right? So how can you make these claims is what I would say. This is the acts on this ball. The first one is the force with which you throw the ball upwards, the external force coming in from you, creating a thrust into the ball. So that's the upward force. Second one is the downward force, which is the gravitational force of the earth. And there is a third one as well, which is the air resistance. So these three are the forces that act on this football. This is simple. It gives me a picture of someone who has learned things like upward force, downward gravity, air resistance, all these things from modern physics and then wrote them down and then claimed they were discovered way before in these ancient texts. Simple physics and we know that. Now let's see what Maharishi Kanad says. The first one is Prayatna, the external oh, upward force. Okay, okay. Uh, so he was describing the physics of today, but then he relates that to how it was described in the text he's claiming. Force with which I throw the ball straight up into the air. And the second one is Gurutva, which is the downward pull of the earth, which is the gravitational force. I'll explain in a short while how Gurutva means gravitational force. But here if you see, what he says is, the upward movement of any body, which is Ukchepanam, is a resultant of these two opposing forces, Prayatna and Gurutva. So that's what it means. Gurutva Prayatna Samyoganam Ukchepanam. If we translate this into a bit of technical terms, the upward movement of any object that is thrown straight up into the air is directly proportional so people are gonna come to me after this video goes up and ask me what proof do you have that this was not discovered in ancient times? Bro, what proof do you have that it was discovered in ancient times? That these were written down back then? What proof do you have? There's nothing that has been shown anywhere in this video of these things haven't been having been discovered back then. And it's very suspicious to me considering there are many other works like the Vaimanika Shastra and Vedic Mathematics which do have fraudulent claims of their origins being from ancient India. Very likely that this could be one such. So we have Aristotle from Greece in 3rd century BC who conceptualized gravity. Then we have Varahamihira from 6th century CE talking about gravity in Panchasiddhantika. Then we have Brahmagupta in Brahmasputta Siddhanta about the same time talking about gravity. Then we have Alberoni 10th century and many other Islamic scholars who worked on gravity. And then Galileo who conducted experiments on the gravitational pull. Then we have See experiments. Experiments are the important thing. And even Alberoni I believe did some experimental uh, observations. Kepler who kind of conceptualized. Kepler had data from observations. Tycho Brahe's data. Cool. I don't have a way with what he stated in the video. The only thing is the claims in the video don't have any evidence backing them up. He's claiming that these are the things written in this text. But he hasn't shown ev any evidence that the text originated when he claims they did. Yep, that's it. For this video, I don't have much to say. Go and watch this video if you are interested in this. And that's about it. See you in the next one.